Hello everyone and welcome to solving polynomial equations with u substitution. And the good thing about this video is that a lot of these equations can be solved with a previous method we've been talking about or this new method of u substitution. And I've noticed in my experience that using u substitution, once you get the hang of it, sometimes is faster than the methods we've done already. So let's get started so you can see what I mean. Number one, notice when you look at this polynomial, it looks like it could be a quadratic, something squared, something in the middle, and then a number. And so my initial gut instinct is, can I somehow factor this? It looks very strange though. My second idea is, and some of you might be wondering, can I just foil this out, distribute this, and solve that way? Yes, you can, but that would definitely take some time. So let me show you another way with u substitution. For those of you that have seen u substitution before, what you're going to do is substitute in something, and the most popular letter to use is u. So some of you might have noticed that 1 minus y repeats twice. So what if we called u 1 minus y? The reason we use the letter u is so that we're not using x, which we're used to, because the substitution supposed to replace was already in the problem. Here's some good news about number one. If I say that u is equal to 1 minus y, that means that every time I see a 1 minus y, I can replace it with u. So this would become 3u squared plus 5u plus 2 equals 0. And now that I have everything written with the same variable, this looks like something I can factor with split the middle term. So if I did a times c, I would get 6. The two numbers that multiply to be 6 and combine to be 5 are positive 2 and 3. So if I split the middle and made this 3u plus 2u plus 2 equals 0 and found the GCF, 3u, u plus 1, plus 2, u plus 1 equals 0, we get something that we recognize as 3u plus 2, u plus 1 equals 0. So except for the u substitution, everything else right now is review. My two answers for u would be negative 2 thirds and u equals negative 1. Now here's the part that sometimes students forget, but it kind of makes sense why we have to do this. The original problem had y's. Now we only have u's. But we know that u is equal to 1 plus y. So if I want to get my answers in terms of y, not u, I can say that u is really 1 minus y, and that equals negative 2 thirds, and this u is also 1 minus y, and that equals negative 1. So if I want my answers with just y's, here I'd have negative y equals negative 2 thirds minus 1, so negative y would equal negative 5 thirds, so y would either be 5 thirds, or negative y would be negative 2, so y would be positive 2. And you can absolutely plug in your, your answers as a common theme throughout this unit. You can take your answers and plug them back in. I already have 5 thirds does work as well as positive 2 if you plug them back in and check. But that, guys, is use substitution, that you create something that you recognize, like a factoring uh, split the middle term, and then you just replace what you substituted and find the real letter that you want. This theme tends to continue, and I want to go to something like number two. Now, some of you may remember that negative exponents cause things to flip. So if you remember that, you could change this problem to 1 over x squared minus 4 over x minus 21 equals 0. If I did that, I would have to go back to the rational equation video, and I would remember that I have to find a common denominator. So that is one way you can solve the problem, and it is not wrong. But using u substitution, I wonder if I can replace something in here so that I can easily factor. So here's what I notice. It's not obvious at first. I look at this middle term, x to the negative first, and I wonder, can I write x to the negative second in terms of x to the first? And so I think about it, and I think, wait a minute, x to the negative first squared isn't that the same as x to the negative second, because you multiply the exponents? If I write down everything else as I see it, 
I notice that maybe I can make a u substitution for x to the negative first. Kind of bear with me here. If I replaced x to the negative first with u, this would become u squared minus 4u minus 21 equals 0. And now this polynomial has a lead coefficient of 1 and is more easily factored. Two numbers that multiply to be 21 and combine to be negative 4 are negative 7 and positive 3. So my two answers for u are 7 and negative 3. But my actual answers for x, we need to re-substitute. I know that u is really equivalent to the x to the negative first, and I can replace that twice. If you recall from up here, x to the negative first is really 1 over x. So 1 over x equals 7, and 1 over x equals negative 3. If I cross multiply, you'd get 7x equals 1, negative 3x equals 1. So my two answers are negative 1 third and positive 1 seventh. And if you plug those back in and check, they also do both work. So this one was definitely a little hard to see, but as we keep going, I'm going to show you this pattern that keeps coming up quite a bit. For instance, if I go back to the first problem, did anyone notice that my u that I took out was the second term, and that it was squared in the first term? And in the second example, my u was the second, was something in the second term, and then my first term was squared. So I wonder, if I look at number three, if I can find what my u is going to be before I start. Now, before we get to the u substitution, some of you might be looking at x to the sixth and thinking maybe I can factor it using x cubes, like the difference of cubes or the sum of cubes. Maybe, but let me show you how I can do this one with u substitution. If anyone's looking at this and thinking maybe it has to do with the second term, I agree. So let's try it. What if I said u was x to the third, like the last couple examples? Can I rewrite the first term as x cubed to the something? I can, because x to the third squared is really x to the sixth power. So let me recopy again what I have here. And now if I think about substituting u every time I see x to the third, this becomes u squared plus 3u plus 2 equals 0. So if I factor this, I would get u plus 2, u plus 1 equals 0. So u is negative 2 and u is negative 1. But again, I know that u is really equal to x cubed. So I have x cubed equals negative 2 and I have x cubed equals negative 1. So if I take the cube root of both sides of these equations. Here, the number times itself three times that gives me negative one is negative one. Here, I'm gonna actually use the calculator for this. In your calculator, you could type in negative two to the one third power. And if you do that, you would get, let me double check that you would get that x equals negative 1.25992. And I even double checked this one. I plugged this in it as a graph and I looked to see if the graph would cross the x-axis here and here, and it did. So I know that those are my real root answers. It's always good to use your calculator to double check. Notice, I'm trying to give you a lot of different examples of u substitution, but the idea if the middle term is going to stand strong in this next example. So, if I look at this final example number four, I want to eventually find what u is. But if you've noticed in the last couple examples, number three had the highest power first. Number two eventually was the highest power first. Same with number one. So if I look at 4, I notice that this is the cube root and then raised to the first, and this is the cube root and raised to the second. So this is actually the highest exponent. So I'm going to rewrite it. 2x to the 2 thirds plus 3x to the 1 third 
equals 5. So all I did was switch these around. And now that they're in the correct order, my i goes to this middle term. And I wonder if there's anything I can replace with u so I can factor this more easily. And so my i goes to the 1 third. And I'm going to just try it. What if I said that u was the same as x to the 1 third? If we come to our first term, can we somehow change this to something squared? Well, if I have x to the 1 third, if I square x to the 1 third, is this the same as x to the 2 thirds power? Yes, it is, because 1 third times 2 is 2 thirds. So again, if I just rewrite the rest of the problem, and I think about u substitution, if I replace this with u and this with u, I get 2u squared plus 3u equals 5. So here's the part where I'm going to pause the video, and I want you to factor this with the u's, and I want you to try, that's terrible, u to try, to plug this substitution back in here to see if you can find the x's for, a, for x. So please pause now. All right, guys, so to come back with you, I moved the 5 over, said that if I have to split the middle term, my a times c was negative 10. So I said the two numbers that combined to be 3 was 5 and negative 2. So then I grouped and took u out of the first two and got 2u minus 5, plus 5 if you did it this way. Here, the reason I decided to do it this way was to remind you that you're technically taking out a negative 1, so you have to write that. So then you're left with 2u plus 5. If I factor it, if you got u equals negative 5 halves and u equals 1, great, great job. If you need to pause the video and copy, feel free. Unfortunately, we're not done with the problem yet because if I use the u substitution and know that u is equal to x to the 1 3rd power, then I can replace u with x to the 1 3rd. And based on previous videos, how do I get rid of a 1 3rd quickly? Well, the inverse is cubing both sides. So here, I'd get x equals negative 5 halves to the third. Negative 5 to the third is negative 125. 2 to the third is 8. So negative 125 over 8 is one possible answer. Here, if I raise both sides to the third, x would be positive 1. And I did take the time to plug both of these back in in my calculator, and I did see that they worked. You could always plug it in and graph it as well to see, and that is your choice completely. But this is u substitution, that every single one of these problems could be solved a different way, but in the end, u substitution can be faster because you break it down into something that you already know, especially like something like number three, this was pretty quick to factor, and after you factor it, the solving after that is not too bad. And again, we will be practicing a mix of u substitution tomorrow, as well as more cumulative review. All right, guys, thank you. And after this, there is one more video over irrational inequalities. And after that, we're going to be doing more mixed practice. Thank you, and see you next time.